this man once rescued a crocodile from imminent death. Years later, an unexpected turn of events unfolded. Among the Earth's most perilous creatures lurk beneath the water's surface, armed with formidable jaws and lightning-fast strikes, a danger that keeps most fishermen at a safe distance. Ombo, much like his fellow fishermen, led a quiet existence. Hailing from Kalimitan, he spent a significant portion of his life on the water, navigating the waves in his weathered wooden fishing boat. Each dawn, he embarked on his solitary journey, hauling in his catch to sell at the bustling market by the docks, all to support his newborn son, Booty. Every haul of fish was a step toward securing Booty's education, a future Ombo was determined to shape away from the perilous life of a fisherman. Despite the solitary nature of his work, Ombo faced each day's challenges alone, from baiting hooks to navigating the narrow river that led to the serene expanse of the sea. One tranquil morning, as the sun lingered just below the horizon, Ombo set out to his preferred fishing spot, relishing the solitude before the arrival of his fellow fishermen. Little did he know, the tranquility of the sea held an unexpected twist that would alter his life's course. Ombo's roots traced back to the Benton Islands, once a tranquil sanctuary that had gradually morphed into a bustling cityscape over the years. Yet, amidst the urban sprawl and industrial hustle, Ombo remained tethered to the essence of his hometown, finding solace and connection through the marine life that still thrived in the waters. Even on his rare days off, Ombo found himself drawn to the sea, exploring the vibrant reefs in search of new aquatic wonders. It was during these leisurely pursuits that the sea often revealed its most astonishing secrets, catching Ombo off guard with its surprises. As Ombo settled into his routine, ready to cast his line and bask in the sunrise, fate intervened, heralding a change that would reshape his destiny forever. Suddenly, one of Ombo's fishing lines jerked sharply to the left, startling him. Peering over the side of his boat, he anticipated a sizable catch, but instead, he caught sight of a shadow gliding beneath the water, too angular and substantial for a mere fish. As the shadow tugged on the line, it yanked the fishing rod into the depths with astonishing force, leaving Ombo scrambling to maintain his balance as his boat rocked perilously. In an instant, a colossal green form erupted from the water, its jagged teeth and razor-like skin unmistakably identifying it as a crocodile. While Ombo had encountered crocodiles in shallower waters, their presence this far from the swamp was unprecedented. This particular crocodile, about three feet or one meter in length, thrashed about in distress, its jaws ensnared by a large plastic bag, rendering it unable to breathe. Instinctively, without pausing to consider the danger, Ombo leaped onto the crocodile's back, grappling with its powerful jaws to pry them open with his bare hands. Amidst the chaos of splashing water, Ombo's strength, honed by years of hauling his boat along the riverbank, proved formidable. Within moments, he managed to extract the plastic bag from the crocodile's mouth, saving the creature from a certain demise. Pushing the relieved crocodile away with his feet, Ombo swiftly swam back to the safety of his boat, his heart pounding with adrenaline. For a fleeting moment, man and crocodile locked eyes, a silent acknowledgement passing between them, before the reptile darted off into the distance, its life spared by the courageous actions of a humble fisherman. Ombo clambered back into his boat, wringing out his soaked clothes, still reeling from the adrenaline rush of his harrowing encounter. As he took a moment to collect himself, little did he know that the day was far from over, and stranger events lay ahead. Later, as Ombo made his way back towards the river, he heard the distinct sound of splashing behind his boat. Casting a glance over his shoulder, he was astonished to find the crocodile from earlier trailing behind him once more. Unsure of the reptile's intentions, Ombo quickened his pace, but to his surprise, the crocodile effortlessly kept pace, swimming alongside the boat. With a sense of curiosity mingled with caution, Ombo tentatively reached out, offering the crocodile a fish from his earlier catch. The reptile eagerly accepted the offering, maintaining its proximity to the boat as they journeyed towards Ombo's home. Upon reaching the riverbank, Ombo's wife, initially panicked at the sight of the crocodile, watched in amazement as her husband calmly interacted with the creature. When Ombo continued to share his catch with the crocodile, a bond seemed to form between them, defying the expectations of all who witnessed the unlikely friendship. After a leisurely swim, the crocodile eventually bid farewell, leaving Ombo and his wife marveling at the surreal experience. But the tale was far from over. 
Years passed, and amidst the tranquility of their everyday lives, Ambo's wife received an extraordinary piece of news. During a fishing trip with their son, she spotted the familiar crocodile returning once again, seemingly in search of Ambo himself. With Ambo away, his wife and neighbors, aware of the unique bond forged years ago, welcomed the crocodile back with open arms, feeding her as they had done in the past. Upon Ambo's return, he was greeted by the heartwarming sight of the crocodile once more gracing their presence, a testament to the enduring connection that transcended the boundaries between man and beast. They reunited in a shallow stretch of the river, where the crocodile allowed Ambo to approach closely. Riska, as Ambo had named her, had grown significantly since their first encounter, now a majestic creature spanning an impressive 23 feet or 7 meters from head to tail. Yet, amidst her formidable size, one thing remained unchanged, her deep affection for Ambo. Riska remembered the day Ambo had saved her life all those years ago, and since her return, she sought him out regularly, swimming up to his house in search of both companionship and sustenance. Ambo, in turn, reciprocated this unexpected bond, treating Riska with the care and devotion one might reserve for a beloved pet. If Riska ever failed to appear, Ambo would embark on a search mission, scouring the river in his boat until he found her. Upon locating her, he would offer her a variety of treats, from fresh fish to the occasional indulgence of chicken or beef, ensuring her satisfaction before bidding her farewell as she swam off contentedly. Even during his absences for work, Ambo made arrangements for Riska's care, enlisting the help of neighbors or friends to ensure she never went hungry in his absence. Over the years, Ambo's son, Budi, grew fond of Riska as well, relishing the opportunity to join his father in feeding their unusual but cherished companion. Riska's presence inspired Budi to take action against the pollution plaguing their river, motivating him to spearhead weekly cleanup efforts and nurture aspirations of enacting change as a future politician. For two decades, Riska continued to grace Ambo's home with her visits, occasionally following his boat through the river, just as she had done on that fateful first day. Whenever Riska faced injury or illness, Ambo spared no effort to nurse her back to health, even seeking veterinary advice and medication when necessary, defying the skeptics who doubted the depth of their extraordinary friendship. Ambo's unwavering bond with Riska stood as a testament to the remarkable capacity for trust and connection between man and animal, proving that even the most unlikely companionship could flourish in the unlikeliest of circumstances. After watching this story, what do you think of? Then there is an another story about a raven. Let's expect what will happen. When a raven unexpectedly appears at the funeral of a young girl and drops something into her mouth, confusion fills the mourners. Yet, what unfolds next is truly astonishing. The day itself is somber, the sky overcast, heavy with grief as friends and family gather at a small cemetery in California. Martha, standing beside her daughter Summer's open casket, shares in the prevailing sense of despair. Summer lies motionless, her pale face framed by dark curls, while condolences are whispered amongst the congregation. Suddenly, a disturbance shatters the solemn silence as gasps ripple through the crowd. A raven, its feathers as black as night, materializes out of nowhere, circling above the gathering with sharp eyes fixed upon the open casket. Then, with startling precision, the raven swoops down, depositing something into Summer's still form. A collective shout escapes the lips of the mourners as Summer's body convulses, coughing and spluttering, seemingly infused with life once more. The once lifeless girl sits up, eyes wide with confusion and fear, while the raven watches intently from its perch. Martha, overcome with disbelief and overwhelming joy, cries out as she witnesses her daughter's miraculous revival. Summer, still reeling from the shock, manages to explain that it was mischief, the raven, who saved her. Martha's mind whirls with questions. Could this be the same mischief from Summer's past, the bird that once brought her daughter comfort and companionship? How had he found her in this darkest hour? Memories flood back to Martha, the countless phone calls with Summer, the tales of her bond with mischief, and the struggles they faced. Despite the strain on their family from Summer's illness and the conflicts between Martha and her husband Jack, they always tried to shield their daughter from their unhappiness. When Summer turned three, Martha made the difficult decision to send her to live with her grandmother, Kathy, in California. The hope was that the warmer climate would improve Summer's health and provide her with a better life. 
Additionally, Martha and Jack saw this as an opportunity to work on their strained relationship and return to the strong couple they once were, ready to welcome Summer back when she was healthy. Summer ended up happily living with Kathy for many years. Although Martha missed her daughter terribly, she found solace in knowing that Summer was thriving in the warm Californian sun. They spoke regularly on the phone, and Summer often shared stories about her new friend, Mischief the Raven. One day, while playing in the yard, Summer was surprised by the arrival of Mischief. The raven seemed eager to play, hopping and tapping around her feet. From then on, Mischief became a regular visitor, waiting in a nearby tree for Summer to return from school so they could play together. Summer delighted in recounting their games of chase and hide-and-seek to her mother, who was glad to hear that her daughter was enjoying the life she deserved. However, Summer's happiness was short-lived when her grandmother, Kathy, broke the news that she would have to return to Vermont. Kathy's health was deteriorating, and she could no longer care for Summer properly. Heartbroken at leaving her grandmother and her beloved friend Mischief behind, Summer's return to Vermont was marked by unhappiness. By the time she arrived back, her parents had separated. Despite Martha and Jack's efforts to reconcile, their relationship remained strained, leading to their decision to divorce. Martha had a new partner, Richard, who harbored an immediate dislike for Summer. He often treated her cruelly, shouting over minor issues. If Summer's grades slipped, Richard would even withhold food from her, unbeknownst to her mother. Unfortunately, Kathy passed away not long after Summer's return to Vermont, sending Summer into a deep depression. She expressed to her mother her desire to die so she could be with her grandmother again. Martha began to notice Richard's cruelty but felt trapped in the relationship. Upon hearing her daughter's wishes, Martha knew she had to take action. She told Richard they were going to California to visit Kathy's grave, but secretly, she had no intention of returning to Richard or Vermont. When Summer suddenly fell ill and seemingly died overnight, the shocking truth emerged as she slowly regained consciousness. Summer recounted how Richard had given her strange-tasting candy and juice before their trip. Martha realized with anger and sadness that Richard had attempted to poison her daughter. Thankfully, Summer revealed that Mischief, her loyal raven friend, had intervened just in time. The raven had dropped a mixture of clay and various plants into her mouth, acting as an antidote and purging the poison from her system. Martha understood the depth of Richard's malice and immediately contacted the police to hold him accountable. As Martha dealt with the authorities, Summer shared more about her life in California, with mischief faithfully by her side, seemingly guarding her from further harm. Summer expressed a deep longing to remain in California, away from the toxic environment of her old home in Vermont. Martha, filled with newfound determination to protect her daughter, resolved to honor Summer's wishes. She felt as though she had been granted a second chance at building a proper relationship with her daughter, thanks to the miracle of Summer's return, which had deeply impacted Martha and reshaped her outlook on life and love. Eager to make the most of this opportunity, Martha embraced every moment with Summer. However, one question lingered, how had mischief found Summer? One day, while they were in the yard, Martha decided to inquire further about mischief. Knowing Summer's affinity for nature and animals, Martha wasn't surprised to learn that Summer had immersed herself in learning about ravens after befriending mischief. Summer explained that ravens can form strong, lifelong bonds with humans, occasionally returning to them even after long absences. Martha was grateful for the bond between Summer and mischief, realizing that without it, mischief wouldn't have found her daughter again and subsequently saved her life. With mischief by her side, Summer now lived in a peaceful environment with a loving parent. Her days were filled with wonder and adventure as she explored the vast gardens surrounding their house. Despite Summer outgrowing some of their old games, Mischief remained a faithful companion, always ready to play. Martha tended to the garden, her guilt fading each time she saw her daughter smile. She was certain that Summer's happiness was thanks to the friendship of Mischief. Grateful for the bond they shared, Martha believed it had saved Summer's life and continued to aid in her healing process. Summer often felt her grandmother Kathy's presence in the house and knew she would be pleased with the life Martha and Summer now had. And while Martha occasionally chuckled at the sight of mischief still hanging around, she knew deep down that their bond was special. As for deserving a second chance with Summer, Martha believed she did.
She had learned from her past mistakes and was committed to providing a loving and supportive environment for her daughter. Mischief's intuition about Summer's well-being was perhaps a result of their strong bond and his innate understanding of her needs. Do you think Martha deserved a second chance with Summer, and why do you think Mischief knew that Summer could be saved? Share your thoughts in the comments below.